everybody. Welcome to the Nobody Likes Onions program. My name is Patrick. This is pre-recorded because I did it earlier in the week because I have to get out of town. A lot of you people don't understand the life of a comedian. I'm coming and going. I'm on planes. I got a lot of Midwestern cities to visit. Oh, Patrick, are you working in Little Rock? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I heard you were going to Oklahoma City. Probably. I heard you were going to Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, I do that. As if it's not hot enough in Vegas, I got to get on a plane to go somewhere else where I could melt. Um, we're going to do a show where the content has not been decided. Normally I sit here, I'll write out notes, we'll have a list of stuff. But then I go, you know what, we're professional comedians. If we can't riff for a goddamn hour, I don't want to do it anymore. Oh my God! Hi everybody. Jason Harris is my guest today. Uh, Vegas comedian. What, what should I describe you as? Vegas comedian. Rock on tour. Just Vegas comedian. You are a tall boy. Roused about. Man about town. Um, Renias. Roused man. about. Yeah. What is that? I feel like they're all words rabble around. rouser. Yeah, it's a. What a, is a ra- What's a the difference between a, a rabble rouser and a roused about? I feel like a rabble rouser might be the person who starts the uh, conflict, right? So someone who's like an antagonist rouses uh, rabbles. Yeah, they. they there's ra- no. I want to be a rabbi rouser. I just break into. Yo, to I, I had Jewish ceremonies. It's funny you mentioned that. Not really, but um, it's on, not. on Monday night, I'm working Planet Hollywood this week, right? Okay. And my opening joke is about uh, uh, you, this little five-year-old calls me fat. And, and sorry to ruin the uh, ending for no one who's seen me before or will never see me. But that's okay. Anyway, it does look like a room of before pictures here. <laughs> hey, I'm down 15, but uh, you look great compared I, to where you used to be, Yeah, bro. but I lost... See, I lost 110. Cancer? Very rapidly. Yeah. yeah AIDS. Yeah. And uh, tapeworm. Oh, yeah. Black, black uh, website on the dark web. Did you buy the tapeworm oh, from the dark well, web? Well, you buy shit. <laughs> Yeah. You ever do? You ever go to the flea market where they? And I want to apologize for this. Let me get this out of the way before we jump into to good content because and and it, I was already on good content. Yeah, but I gotta just address this. I have a chirping smoke detector in the background. I, I know, I know. That is driving me mad. Why don't you just take the battery out? You know, a normal man would. Yeah. You know, I'm not dumb. I understand that that's how you're, it works. You're not dumb. You're lazy, but you're not dumb. Lazy, but not dumb. Yeah. But I would no- I would normally, I'm a six foot five guy. I'll reach up. I'll take it out. I'll put a new battery in. Or you do the thing where you just leave it off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because most people don't have nine volts laying around. Multiple options. Believe it. I have nine volts laying around. So you could replace I it. I can't reach it. I have vaulted ceilings. Yeah. They're like 12 foot high. I can't reach it. I don't own a step ladder. First of all, I don't know a step ladder that can hold me. So I'm not investing in step ladders either. Don't, well, Little you, Giant? Should I go by that Little Giant? Little Giants with Rick Moranis and Tom Arnold? No. Oh. There's a little step ladder called the Little oh, Giant. I was I really was hoping we were But I can't reach it. So I go to my apartment complex right, and I do the thing I where I go like, "Hey, I have a chirping smoke detector. Could a maintenance person with a ladder come? I even have the battery if you'll just come do it." Like, I just need a guy to get off his ass and come do it. They took two weeks. They showed up yesterday. He goes up there. He's like, oh, these are on the electrical system, not battery. All you have to do is press this button to reset it. It's all taken care of. He leaves, and it starts again. Mm-hmm. So it's still chirping. And here's the crazy part about it. it doesn't, it's not constant. It'll stop for, for a day. It'll stop for half a day. It'll stop for three minutes. It'll stop for a couple hours. I have no control over when it beeps, when it doesn't beep. What is going on? Is well, it carbon monoxide? Uh, I'm glad you asked because, as you know, I am a fire safety expert. I would think expert, you would know something you know, about it. So. Are there some special uh, Vegas heat detector? You, what is this you thing? You know, uh, this is what I can Beep. point you in the direction of because uh, what I am is a, a, new guy, apartment. a facilitator. A new apartment. A guy who knows guys, a guy who knows ladies, right? Uh, you should hit up like Landry. You know Landry, right? Landry. The comedian Landry. Very funny. Out no. of Atlanta. He works Vegas a lot. He no. is a um he designs like fire safety things and whatnot. And Gabe Fire Malas, safety things. You know, the systems. Systems, those oh, are the like words. The hoods and shit. I think like you go into like a corporate Sprinkler area. Systems. Yeah. So he could tell you Gabe Nolasco up in San Francisco who used to live here. Yeah, yeah. A funny guy. He also does like installation of fire. Things. No, I never so, I never met either one of them. But I need somebody. Well, I'm Clearly, not it's a problem. I just want to address it and let people know I'm not crazy. I understand there's a chirping going on in the background. You might be crazy. Just the chirping yeah, is not the issue. independent issues. Right. Right. 
Should I finish the rabbi story? Yeah, please or no? finish the rabbi. I don't know story. if it's gonna be any I just, good. But anymore. I wanted to get because we have like a. It's almost like someone's. It sounds like people are playing basketball in a gym. I don't think you've ever watched a game of basketball if that's what you think basketball sounds Sneakers like. Sneakers on the hard court? No, I know that's what it, it sounds I, like. I know what you're referring to. You don't think I've ever seen basketball be played? I don't played. think you know what, how many touchdowns it Please. takes to win a game of Please. basketball. I'm, a very, I'm into every match. <laughs> All right, perfect. Okay, so, so no, you know a rabbi. No, I don't. I mean, I pro- yeah, I do know a rabbi, but that's not the story. So <laughs> You roused him good. Um, no, I do this. The, the opening joke is about, and this did happen to me. Uh, I was at the park uh, with my daughter, and this little boy just start, he called. He goes, you're fat. This happens a lot, though, with children. They're, they're, and I get it. It's wonderful. They just say what, like, I could understand back at my heaviest how you've never seen a person as big as me. I do you get it. You're a big guy. I do get it. Yeah. I don't mind it because I'll just, I, that's the whole point of the joke is I give it back to them, right? You know, like, I, right. you insult me, I insult you. So, and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to tell the you whole joke. You do more than insult. You kind of shatter a kid's reality. That's exactly back. it. Yes. You that, know what I mean? It's, I don't yes. know if it's one on one. I don't right. know if it's one to one. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of like going like you're fat. Oh, I hope your mom gets cancer. No, it's I, like okay, you redlined that a little bit. Right. I don't go that, but uh, you saw the joke the other night. It's uh, it, you know, in the end, I tell the kids Santa Claus isn't real. So on Monday, I had uh, a Hasid in the crowd. I think he was a rabbi. So I go and and you know and uh, that's right because Hasid, Hasid, what they're called yeah. Hasidic Jews, Hasidic Jews, right? Okay. A chassid. A chassid. Yeah. So in the end, so I get to the punchline, Santa Claus isn't real, and I go, pound it, Rabbi. And this chassid stands up, pounds my fist in front of the crowd. And like it was just gold from that moment on. Because, you know, if you get a fist pound from a rabbi on your opening joke, the it's audience It's almost like has he's to, blessed the, the, rest the entire of the act. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The audience has any religious leader. It could have been a pastor. Right. You know, it could have been a priest. Kim Jong-un. Well, is he a religious leader or a cult leader? I don't well, know. He's dear leader. Don't they call him that? Yeah. So uh, I don't know about leaders of any type, but religious leaders, once they give you their go ahead, you're good. Okay. Yeah. I've never had, I don't know if I've ever had, uh, I've done comedy in a church, like horrible, filthy comedy. You know, when they turn like these churches into bars. Yeah. Like, and that felt wrong. I made on out in some a church level. once. You made out in a church? Yeah. I finger banged a girl in a church. You win, and I should have banged During out a in a church. During a church service. Did you really? Yeah. We weren't like sitting in the pews or anything. Yeah. What? How old My were finger you was sitting time? in the pew. Uh, you know what I'm saying? She didn't wash. Yeah, her vagina was. Yeah, okay. smelled like catch of the day. Right, because fish. Because women are vagina. gross, right? You slut shame. <laughs> You've been <laughs> slut shamed. Wow, I was. We do a lot. Welcome to the slut shaming podcast. Dude. We hate whores and we think they should all be killed. Uh, Your thoughts? Um, uh, uh, hashtag me too. But you like you are? Were you married? I was not. You we just have a kid. Had a kid out of wedlock. Said Bible, not for me. And now, are you in a relationship? No, I'm. I'm dating. It's good. You enjoying the single? Oh, I'm so much enjoying the single. Vegas life. is a weird place to be single. Yeah, but the thing, yes, it is because there's not normal dating out here, right? Well, especially if you're on like Tinder or something. It's like you're just getting the girls oh, like coming through weekly. Strippers. Like, are their like, profiles literally like in Vegas for the weekend. Yeah, it's better to always. I still think meeting people in person is better than Tinder. I'm not a Tinder. I'm on Tinder, but I don't have luck on Tinder. I'm good when people meet me. One on one. I'm not going to win on my looks. You're not good on paper. Is I'm, that what you're saying? Yeah, this is it. Uh, uh, the looks. I'm not. I'm not right. I'm like all right. You know, okay. He's he's middle right there. But you know, you I, need your alcohol. You need alcohol in your personality to get uh, have a fighting chance. I can do the the personalities. You know, usually good enough for a few weeks, and then they're like, ah. Eh, and then they go, well, we're sick of this. This is, you know, this has been a good little. He seemed like re- there was more than meets the eye, and there's not. There's not. He when really watches a lot of Iron Chef America. It's weird. So. I was just talking about Iron Chef. Uh, when they choose the person, they want to battle. Yeah. On the last show with Carmen Lynch, I was talking about this. Like where you come out and you like choose the person you want to battle. Do all the other chefs just like. I hate that they had to come out and get dressed up and made put makeup on and go through like hair and hair and makeup. You get paid to do that, and you stand there, and Don't then they choose Batali. Not anymore. And he Morimoto doesn't. has to go home. Morimoto gets to chill and gets paid a day's rate for hanging out. Yeah, but it's just I'd be upset. I'd be like, I came here to cook. Do they have little backup kitchens where they can go in the back and like make something? Because I feel like you came to cook. 
Do you want to know what? Do you want to know? So, you know, I had a food TV show. Oh, you probably don't know. No, that. I didn't know. I had this. a food show that I co created and produced that was the first ever food show on ABC. Fuck, that's delicious. That would, yeah, I should be. We were going to do a sketch of that where I'm Action Bronson's uh, stunt double and I, but, or his tasting double. You look like that guy on their body. Right, right. You kind of look like that guy. And the whole thing was um, that I couldn't handle any spice. So, I have to taste all his spicy food and then it. It's why I think I couldn't have a food show is I don't like... You have to like everything. No, I do. Or you have to at least be willing to eat everything. I do. And I would be on there being like, I don't like runny eggs. I don't like seafood. Dude, this is crazy. I'd this be is, fucked. Well, like, I, that's how... You know, I'm a food writer for about five or six different outlets, magazines, websites. Um, you clickbait motherfucker. I didn't, I didn't even plug any of them. <laughs> so, I but, know, but you work for... But I was going to tell you... You work for the problem. On the uh, food show, which was called Time Machine Chefs, um, which should have done much better, but we signed with the wrong executive producers. And, you know, look at your deals, kids. Ha ha. Um, anyway, um, Alon well, Hall. The sucky thing is even starting out, even if you have a shitty deal you in front of you, you, you have take to take it because they're not going to negotiate it at all. Right. And that's what I did. And that's OK. But everyone, you know, when I pitched a chef, uh, the show, it's, hey, we took four superstar chefs, transported them back in time. Wherever they landed, they had to cook with ingredients and cooking methods of that time period. Dope, dope concept. It happened. Now you see it every year on a cooking competition show. Like So you could be that. like, you're in Rome in the 1400s. Yeah, right. Or we, we did ancient China and medieval England, right? So there was, you know, we did Peking Duck as a challenge and they couldn't and use And they're actually like, really good chefs? Yeah, they're superstar chefs. What was this on? This was on ABC. Okay. Wow. Uh, and um, so Alan Hall, uh, who won Top Chef season two, I think, was one of the contestants. And he told me with Iron Chef, the trick is you, they give you like, hey, the secret ingredient might be this, this or this, right? And you give them a list of ingredients that you want brought in. And so if you give them a list of very specific ingredients, then they're going to like, say it's like, you know, uh, whatever, jackfruit, uh, blue, he blue, blue foot chicken. Cardamom. Or, yeah, cardamom <laughs> yeah. would be a weird one because it's just a spice. But you said right. weird one. Right. Okay, so say I want to do jackfruit, and then I'm just like, on that list, I'll give them, like, the most difficult ingredients to find, and then they'll be like, well, we brought in all these crazy ingredients. Let's just go with jackfruit at that point in time. Okay. So you can kind of, like, push it a little. And so. why? And how did this go? How did this show go? My show? It it. it wasn't well advertised. We crushed the rating that they said we were going to get. Right. And then um, and then while we were waiting to hear if they were going to do more, they signed Anthony Bourdain to a, a deal. And I was like, well, well it looks like that over. problem's taken care of. Oh, man. Itself. <laughs> Jesus. Too soon? No, it's okay. So I As mean, long as the joke's good, it's never way, too soon. By the way, where did this love for Bourdain from everybody come from? It's and don't get me wrong. I... I <laughs> I've watched some parts unknown. I've watched some. What's the other show he had? No the, reservations. No reservations. reservations. Story, yeah. I've watched some of all of it. He's great. Yeah, I get it. I like. But him. now it's like he's a but, prophet, right? But it's like every time these comics die. Yeah. Like w when everybody just goes on and on about the world is gonna be. It's like I don't know if your life has changed since Robin Williams took himself out. Well, I think did it's that hurt you. I mean, did it hurt me personally, or was it just no, sad? No, these people who sad. like go. How much of this Bourdain shit has poured out over the like? I get it. Right. He's it was dead. sad. It was sad, and he's got a young kid, and it's sad. And you know, I love the show, and he's done a lot for food culture. But you I didn't agree. climb up in a tower and shoot anybody. Can we celebrate that? Yes, I agree with you on that. <laughs> like, but you, I, I think it's because like it's the idea of like, oh, it's so unexpected, right? So now yeah. we look back and we're like, oh, look at what he did and how much more he could have done. And let's make memes about all these quotes and make him you right. Know, right. You know, like, kind but of he a, really got, it blows my mind when people aren't appreciated much in their life. And then when they die, it's like Greg Giraldo. It's like, if everybody loved him so much, where was all his accolades? Well, that was always the roast joke, right? That he was right, like, he would he always go to pilot. Struggling. And never, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get beyond that and everything like that. And he did have a sitcom. I was just wondering if you got kicked off ABC the same way Roseanne did. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, my uh, my left leaning views uh, weren't racist enough for ABC. We're all, we're in a weird place. So I, I hadn't watched all the new Roseannes. Have you watched? Any I didn't of them? watch any of them. I watched some of them because I can get past the pol like whatever. Like if it is what it is. Like dude, I'm a hundred percent with it's you. It's a sitcom at the end of the day, for whatever it is. It, but I it's off. They took it off Hulu day of. Right. The day ABC dropped it. 
Like you couldn't even go back and watch past episodes on digital streaming. Well, I mean, look at look at we're a real knee jerk well world. Look at what's going on with Chris Hardwick right now. Yeah, I right? just so I haven't even seen this. I've been busy all day. Yeah. I just saw the headline this morning that he was removed off the Nerdist website. And off Doesn't of, he own Nerdist? He sold it two years ago to Legendary. Oh, I didn't but know this. I think, I Who's think, Legendary? Who's uh, buying that? I think they did like, they might have invested in like Lord of the Rings or something like that. Thomas Tull was the, was the guy behind Legendary. I don't know if he's still there. But Hartwick, I saw that yesterday and then today, and he gave a, a thoughtful so response. What, right? So what happened? Like explain so look, the whole situation because I, mean, I don't know any of it. Okay, them. this is what I know, right? I assume his, he me too'd somebody. His, <laughs> in a different way, right? His ex-girlfriend, Chloe Dykstra, posted, and he, she never mentioned him by name, but she was obviously referring to him. She said she was in an emotionally abusive relationship that he always expected sex. When she wouldn't give it to him, he would say, well, you know, my last relationship ended because we didn't have enough sex. She wasn't allowed to have male friends or talk to him in public, and she had a curfew, right? So she said she, that he was emotionally abusive, basically. And I'm probably leaving a few things out, but that's what I remember of it, right? And he responded saying, like, well, I'm shocked at this. You know, I'm now married. I don't think that was the case. She cheated on me. She wanted to get back together. How long has he been married? I don't know. I don't really follow Chris. Who Hartley. are these girls who? But it's years later. Come go on a blog and and bring this up to ruin a man. What and you know and and if my question is what happened and it, whether it's a man or a woman like aren't you and if we're not going to say innocent before proven guilty can we at least get a like a fair trial give like well you, no you can't anymore no, you can't. because everything's a knee jerk and I. Believe me, I understand the irony of two fucking straight white males sitting in a room talking about this. But when do, when do I get a pushback? You don't get a... I'm afraid of any interaction with a woman now because she could decide years from now, if I blow up and get famous or something, to go on a blog... No crime was really committed or whatever, but she felt disrespected. Well, look at the Aziz situation. Some, that. It's like either... Either he was sexually aggressive over the line, but didn't really commit any crimes, and then called you an Uber and sent you home when you asked to, or he committed a crime, and you need to shut up on the blog and go to the police. I don't think like pick one or the other. Yeah, I mean, like, you I, don't get to like just tell the details of a date. The Aziz thing, I, which I read, did not seem like a crime. I, I, I get he was probably cringe. Cringe worthy aggressive. Right. And and but I that and, in and hey, of itself have, is not a crime. And if he stopped every time he from what I understand, she like blew him like thirteen times that night. I don't know. Starting I, and look, stopping. I believe that like there have definitely been times like as a dude where you're like, Oh, come of on, course. you wanna like every you know, girl every like, guy. Right? And especially when and, you know. when she's like, I don't know if we should and you cool things down and then it picks up again, yeah. you start kissing again, and then she goes down on you again, well, you're going to try to fuck her again. That's just a guy. It's, I don't know. Right. And the thing, you know, I remember there was the one, there was like a writer. I think he was on Girls and then Lena Dunham defended him and was like, and they attacked Lena Dunham, who's like, who's the biggest pro-feminist. Of, well, this like, is the, the problem greatest, with right? the liberal snowflake bullshit is they're going to eat themselves. You know, now you're mm -hmm. losing Morgan Freeman. You know, first it was, uh, it was the SNL writer, the, the senator. Al Franken. Al Franken. Right. Like you're finding out that all these monsters are actually like liberal Democrats who are on your side and do a lot of good shit. Like yeah. now we're hanging Morgan Freeman. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, I just think, you know what it is? Like I get it. I get where we're, and, uh, and obviously we, I don't think it needs to be said. We support, you know, uh, yeah, I'm equality not, and me too I'm not and everything. For, we're not, we're not, I'm not for raping. Right. We're anti rape. I'm not for, we're anti sexual women assault. Less than, we're pro equality. I'm sick of talking about it. I think what happened, <laughs> this is my theory, right? Is that it started in a very, as most things do, very black and white. And they, you know, with like Harvey Weinstein, that's a very black and white situation. I feel right? like it's still very black and white. Right. But now, now you're getting to these stories. Aziz or Hardwick or whoever, and it's like, well, there's a gray oh, I see area. What you're you know saying. what I mean? Now we can't. Well, anytime there's any inter personal, interpersonal relationships, especially sexual in nature, are all gray. 
I who was the uh, girl who said like, oh, he was kissing me without my permission. I'd never gotten permission for a kiss before the kiss. I mean, have you? That, right. Well, can uh, I kiss you now? Like, yeah. who does that? Well, and then you know what about this? Like, um, and you know, I don't think this was a thing when we were coming up in the in the sex game, as they say, right? I don't like, like that you think that I'm not still on my way. I haven't peaked yet. Really? It's a lot. You got a long way to go. So. I'm almost there. Keep talking. All right. But this idea of like, okay, you start and then you got to ask to do the next step and the next That's step. That's crazy. It takes the romance and the well, mystery. Also, out of as an artist, like I like to think I'm pretty good at reading a crowd. Right. You know what I mean? I've it's seen just, your set. You're not. Well, that's, <laughs> you know, appreciated and mean. I appreciate the honest <laughs> feedback, but it also hurts. Scars uh, the soul a little bit. No, but you know what? It's as it's simple as like. It's just weird. Right. Wait, I don't know when it became any more than like. I've had girls go like, I don't want to do this tonight, or right, or, and then you stop let's, and like, cool, cool we'll, we'll just kiss, and that's yeah. that. You know, I'm kind, I'm half mad at the guys because there's clearly a lot of guys out there who can't fucking take an actual, even a verbal command of, right. hey, let's cool off, let's yeah. let's stop for it. Like, well, we knew that. So guys these guys are, are dicks. We knew this, yeah. But also, I don't need the mountain out of the molehill from the female side either. It's like you're just describing a shitty date. You right. went on a bad date. Yeah. If the guy at the end of the day, every time you said stop, you he stopped. If it got hot and heavy again and then built up into something and you said stop again and he stopped, and then he calls you an Uber home, I don't know if we need to tell anyone about that story. That sounds like a personal thing between two people and you make up your mind to go like, well, no that guy was a little aggressive and I'll never go out with him again. It That's what you say to yourself. It doesn't seem like anything's personal anymore. When I read the Hardwick stuff, I was like, man, this is really personal stuff. And I thought it was like... I don't know where this fits in the public. I see field. what you mean by the gray area, but what I, when I say it's still black and white, what I mean is like I feel like um, it's being there's treated. no difference in disease and sorry and Harvey sure. Weinstein. I, I, Once I you're on the list, you're on the list. You're and it a shouldn't sex, be that. Way. You're a sex offender if you go to parks and scoop up kids and fist them, and you're also a sex offender if you're an 18 year old who's fucking your 17 year old girlfriend. You go on the same list, right? That doesn't. Those are two very different situations. I wish I wish we were a little more nuanced and mature about the conversation. I wish we could practically Be make decisions based on context and intent. Right, because what you're saying is true. Like um, when you just go black and white, then movements that are important well, yeah. end up and well, we like to put out, we like to categorize, we like to label, yeah. we like to put everybody in a box. But it's not like that. There's it's not. when you bring context and intent into things. There is a whole spectrum. Of like a guy can be just an aggr a sexually aggressive dick, and sure. that's not illegal, bro. It's a guy you just truth. shouldn't go out with Yo, again. Here's probably. the truth, and you, I mean, dude, Vegas. When I started, don't tell me what I know. You know this, okay? Vegas was the wild, wild west when I started comedy, and you know this because you've been around. You know, in what, in right? what regard? We would do bar shows, and like people would be fucking in parking lots and getting blowjobs. I think parking that lots. still happens. I don't think it happens like it used to, dude. It was everyone was out to bang all the time. Now it's not like that, but like every single one of us who started back then would admit, like, oh man, like there's definitely stuff that we did that back then or the way we acted that we would never do today. And part of that's just maturing. And that's not saying we did anything horrible, but we were trying to get laid and, you know, and sometimes we did and sometimes we didn't. Well, you know? yeah, yeah. It's a weird thing that we do where we hold everything from the past up to, uh, up to a magnifying glass of today. Yeah. It's like, there's the thing where like George Bush is in the wheelchair and they're taking the photo and he does oh, a little grab yeah. ass, yeah, I little saw old that. man grab ass. Yeah, it's like he comes from a time where just everyone did that. Not not saying it's right. right. Not saying he just it's doesn't right. Doesn't know. But you have to know the difference as a woman between a guy who is making a sexually aggressive, inappropriate. Like it is sexually aggressive and inappropriate. But j what he thinks in his mind intended as a cute joke. And again, his intention doesn't make it right. But you don't need to go on and talk about how scared you are. George Bush ain't hunting you down. He's not in your in your. He's not Dick Cheney. <laughs> exactly. He's not gonna shoot you in the face. Right. So. No, I don't. But you know what I mean. Like we're we're in a weird, we're in a very weird, dangerous. Like I don't want to be alive in twenty years if this is how it's going. I don't know what it's happens. gonna be bad. We want we all like we. Do you said, have a daughter. I have a daughter, and that's important. Obviously, like I want the best for her. I want her. 
and every woman to be safe and equal and everything. And I, you know, and well, you understand that guys when they try to fuck her are gonna be like, "Come on," and and try to fuck her. Sure. And what what I will do as a parent is educate her that every guy is a scumbag, which we know, you know. Right. And it's like, let's be honest about it. It's so. not even that they're a scum. Look, guys want to fuck. There's no 16 year old kid who's a scumbag. Ah, uh, there's it's, a few. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. We've all seen uh, George Bush's daughters. But, um, no, the, the thing where it's like, they're just hormones running through a kid at maximum levels telling him, do this, do this, boobies, boobies, pussy, boobies. Like, right. And then, you know. It's just the way it is. Like, we're wired that way. And you know how you become a better person? By, like, living life, going through experiences, and learning from your experiences. Right. And that's not saying, like, the extreme. I know people. Some people will hear it and be like, "Oh, you're saying you can go out and you know do whatever you want." And blah blah. As I'm long saying as you're like, sorry for it afterwards. It's like, no, no that's you not know what what's basically right and wrong. Right. And sometimes you do stuff and you step over a verbal line or whatever it is, and you're like, "Oh, that was as a comedian. That was wrong. I'm a fucking idiot. I apologize." But I wish there was a little more of the of the other side instead of responding with outrage and vengeance of coming to a person and being like. Hey, when you did that the other night, or when you said that the other night, like here's I just want, I just want you to know how it made me feel. Right, isn't that? And then you could, as a ra- an, another rational person in the conversation, go, "Oh man, I didn't even realize that, and that's not the way I meant it. That doesn't make it right. I don't want to make you feel that way anymore. Let's move on from this." Yeah, like well, I wish we could just do that more as humans, but well, we can't. Well, moving from humans to comedians, which you know, debatable if we are. Um, it's it's a crazy time, like you're saying on on stage right now. You you know, like people. What happened to the freedom of speech for comedians? You know what I mean? It's a tough right. it's a tough world right now for a comic. And I do right. recognize the fact that when people bring that up most of the time, when they're like, "Oh, you can't say anything, freedom of speech," and da da da, it's like well, usually you just want to say something shitty that you know you probably shouldn't be saying. Yes, there's but, a difference. But there. there is there is a a lot of the jokes. I used to do that don't that I don't do anymore because of content are satirical in nature. On paper, if you read this joke, it is horrible. But if you see me perform the joke, you can tell it's tongue in, tongue in cheek, and I'm not serious. It's satire. But again, intent and context, we've taken it out of the way. And he's like, you says here that all, all rape is women's fault. It's like, well, that's part of a joke. That I do, and also you were a younger, it's obviously not serious, right? You're a younger comedian, and every well, at the time when you were writing stuff like that, right? It was like, oh, you know, I'm edgy, I'm this, I'm that, and, or in general, not right. you specifically. And you become a writer, better writer, and you become more personal over time, and you learn like, hey, these jokes were fine when I was like learning how to write. But now, like, I have to up my game and become a better at my craft. I'm not. It's not even about upping the game, even for me. Like, I just don't want to. I'm in a place where I don't want to touch political material. Yeah. Because I feel like you're just gonna. All you can do is make half the audience laugh. Yeah, I uh, half the audience is gonna hate it if you go after Hillary or Trump. I do one joke that involves Trump, and it's a misdirect joke that has nothing to do with him until the end, and then I tag it, and it's it's fine. But I expect the use, and I get the use, and it's fine. Like I don't mind it. Yeah, I just I'm in a place where it's like, why bother? Why bother even taking a road that could end with not everybody on board? Sure, my thing is that like the the build of the joke led to that point. Like it wasn't a joke written about Trump. It just right. happens that he's what, you know, the situation works itself into that. So that's okay. With yeah. That. I don't fuck it. I, I don't know. It's almost why I love doing shows in the Midwest. Cause they don't have that chip on their shoulder that people in cities, especially New York, LA. I think we're pretty good out here, but sometimes LA is the worst place Vegas. to do comedy. I'm talking Vegas is pretty good. Yeah. You know. But LA, if you ask me, probably least favorite city to do comedy in, in America, Los Angeles. What I didn't like about LA when I moved down there was. Yeah, you lived there for a while. For a minute, yeah. Was like, dude, I was coming in. I was already, I'd already headlined a college tour, right? I had already sold a couple of screenplays, had a TV show, and I'm still like, oh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm okay. I'll drive 40 minutes to do a three minute spot at an open mic just to get seen. And it's like, man, three minutes. Like, what are you getting? What are you showing in three minutes? Yeah. Uh, you know, on a Monday at 12. Well, you're not getting like, anybody like, on your side in sure. three minutes. You're yeah. Not- it took me a real, it took me almost the full year to like realize like you got to really be able to pick your like spots. A drive through takes longer. 
Yeah. Than so, three minutes. You know, so then you get to the point where like, oh, well, if it's not a seven minute set, then, you know, like, I, right. I, which up here in Vegas, the seven minute set is like nothing in L.A. Like that's like a golden amount of time and everything. Like, yeah, that, you know? I don't I don't fucking like it. I, I can never do if I never did comedy in L.A. again, which won't happen. But if I never did, I'd probably like just as far as crowds and like people with the judgy. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. I don't know if we need a straight. I love the thing, too, of like, well, if you were a rape victim, you could do that joke. But you're a you're a white male who's privileged and you shouldn't do that joke. And it's like, well, now we're just saying that my opinions right. aren't. Is, val- it, like, is it funny? Is the joke funny? That's all I care about. You know? And, yeah, but it's not all people care about. Right. And, you know, like I dude, I wish there like I'm a liberal person i w- every time i see a conservative uh, someone i know who's conservative and they go on stage and they don't talk about like being conservative i'm like bro lean right. into that someone bring some heat with being conservative like you know what i mean bring some intelligence bring some heat bring, make it funny because i don't really think i mean other than nick DePaulo, the guy there's a guy out here who's real conservative and talks about on stage a lot joe joe uh calise no nah. Is it yeah? Is the guy skinny guy glasses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe's funny. Yeah, Joe's a funny guy. He talks about being a Republican and stuff on stage. Okay, I haven't seen that. I know I've seen him do a lot of other things, but uh, like that that would be considered like, ooh, you know this. Yeah. That. But uh, I, I mean, other than Nick DiPaolo, is there a famous good conservative comedian? Well, right I think now? a lot of those guys who are back in that tough crowd. Yeah. Type gen- like uh, Colin Quinn is probably conservative. I've, I, bet I would not. imagine. I bet he's liberal. That's the thing. Like, I think, I think the lines are blurred on what liberal is. Nobody thinks Nick DiPaolo like hates gays and doesn't want abortions to be legal. I do. No, I don't think. So. But you know what I mean. Like, there's a different definition of, of like what a Republican or no, conservative it's is. Black and white, just like everything else. Right, but I mean, you know what I'm saying. Like, I was a registered Republican for a long time when I lived in L.A., but didn't even think about it in terms of like, oh, what do so you think babies sh- shouldn't be aborted and gays shouldn't get married? It's like, n- no. But it's it's just weird. Isn't we this draw funny weird podcast, fucking lines. Everybody. No, yeah, it's the fucking word. Ha-ha. I'll tell you this. I, I'm also outraged at something else in my apartment. I thought I lived in a nice apartment complex until summer no, started. I could have told you you don't. Well, you know, until summer started, the ragtag group of people in this pool outside my you mean apartment. The minorities, all day. the minorities. I wasn't going to say it, but yeah, the darks. <laughs> They're riding bicycles and scooters in the pool. Into the pool. I love that. I would like to see that. It sounds like it's these not guys. A rap video. You're not in a Red Bull competition of some sort. These sound like rabble rousers to me. Yes. Yeah. So Ne'er dwells. Rab scallions right here. Yeah, I don't like. W- no, I live in a place where it's like quiet and like calm and the apartment's nice and I'm happy with it. It feels safe. What's your rent? And then How much you pay? Well, that's fucking rude to ask me in the <laughs> middle of a show, you know? Eleven hundred. Anyway, um I since summer started and kids are out of school. And they're in that pool all day long. Yeah, I have on. realized how shitty this apartment Did is. Did you go in the pool beforehand? What do you mean? Like before when the kids were in school? Before, or? after, and during. Oh, you still go in the pool with the bikes and, the, and everything? No, uh, I would not go in during bike, <laughs> the biking hours. I would love to see you ride a bike into a pool. Into a pool? In, in general, I think I'd enjoy seeing you ride Just a seeing bike. seeing me ride a yeah. bike? Yeah, I'd like that. But more, but more so into a pool. you think would look sillier riding a bike? Me or you? Definitely me. Cause well, I'm then, a, well, then fuck off. Well, no, I didn't say... You're acting like this I didn't pu- say... This press conference is over. <laughs> my uh, my issue with the bike is I got this like bad lower back, so I have to get the raised handlebars like an old lady. Oh, you're doing like... Everything. Or, yeah. or like or the a like Vato, chopper. Yeah. Like a, like yeah. a, yeah, like Which a I lean, can make that work. You want a recumbent? <laughs> I don't know. See, that's the lean back? Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Laying back that. and pedaling. Oh, yeah. And maybe I could, yeah, I could get like a little or like a tricycle, like the old women uh, drive with a big banana seat. What about a one of those like um, old timey bikes with the giant front wheel? Can I get one of uh, those? A penny farthing. Nice. Yeah. That's a great word. Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Penny farthing. That's why you go see this it's guy the, when he goes to Tulsa. Or the big the big wheel in the Phoenix. front and the tiny wheel in the I love back. It. <laughs> 
<laughs> not awkward. Not no. awkward for you. Not well, you know what? I tr- I'm trying to transition from smoking to vaping. Yeah. And I'm down to like two cigarettes a day. But your cancer is gone, right? Your cancer, you're done with the cancer. It's in remission. Can, it's never gone. Right. But we're I'm going to tell you how you. the doctors told me. Right. No, I get it. Um, you'll never get it all out. This is what There's I tell girls when I come in. Yeah, you got a little You'll never cancer. get all of it out. You got a, got a little... Got a little of the C from old PM right here. Um, yeah, I I want to get a BB gun and shoot children in my pool. Hmm. But that's when I also realized that I'm an old man now. Yeah. When you start looking at kids playing in your neighborhood out the window and going, ah! What did it for me when I think I was became like the old man-ish type was when I went from like going out all the time to deciding like, yeah, I'd rather just stay in and watch Netflix, you know, or something like that. What is good know? pie? Oh, good pie. My, this pizza? Yeah. Dude, you know... Uh, or pie? It's pizza. It's okay. my homie Vincent's uh, place, and it's dope. If you like New York pizza, he makes great New York-style pizza. I've not had any really good pizza here. I will take you. There's t- uh, So, look, I'm going to be honest. Like I said earlier, I'm a food writer. I think Vegas outside of New York is the best pizza city in the country right now. Well, I've told people this. Mm. I would put Vegas food... Oh, yeah, right up there as with the ...as one top. of the best... Food cities in the world. Yes. And when people question that and go like, oh, what do you ever hear about that's good from Vegas? It's like, it's not about that. It's the fact that every big chef, it's there's so much money here that the quality of food has to be on par with like what kings and queens. Yes. Like, people want the best right. of the best here. Now, that's step one, right? What you're saying is step one. Yeah. And then every celebrity chef has to be as good as the next one unless there's a few horrible ones out there, I'll be honest. Except Bourdain. Um, well, Bourdain's the worst, especially this past week. Just not being creative. He's doing a callback again. Um, but step two of this is that all these chefs from the strip were like, yo, this is a crazy lifestyle. I don't want to do this. I want to go open up a place in the suburbs, cook what I want to cook, and like lead a normal life. So there's plenty of great restaurants out here. And then they like, have the money know. to do that because they've made millions in working or in enough, hotels. On or, the yeah, or enough to be like, I was, you know, Michael Mina's main guy for so and so. So we have plenty of good food out here. Find me on any social media and I will be happy to share restaurants with any of you. What's your favorite place in Vegas? So my fa- I was there last night on the strip. It's Harvest, which is amazing. Where's that? It's in the Bellagio. Roy Alomar. He's dope. Harvest. Yeah. So okay. this guy, this is how good he is. Besides being like a chop champion. Are you, champion ju- are you the that. guy? Are you going into these places? You're just getting hooked up? Yeah. Oh I get hooked God. up. Why don't you ever take me to these places? I'll take you. We can go well, whenever you want. Go. <laughs> All right. Uh, when you get back. That's crazy. Me. though. Yeah. Well, that's how I, that's the thing. That's what I say in the act. Like I, I got fat. I don't do drugs. I don't really drink, but like I'm a food writer. And when I go to restaurants, like chefs want to impress me. So it's not like here's an appetizer. Here's an entree. It's like, here's course eight. And here's three yeah, desserts. You're getting just stuff brought out. Right. right. And, and I overindulged for a while and now I'm chilling and like being like, yo, I got to get healthy again. But like, it's great. I have, you mentioned Morimoto after there, dude. Morimoto cooked for me and like nine other people for three hours once on a whim. It was the best, probably the best culinary experience. Do you I've like that? I've had a lot of. I've been to like some of these restaurants that are like. I went to a restaurant in uh, Amsterdam. There was a two Michelin star restaurant, and the company that was picking it up. Uh, there were probably ten of us, twelve of us, and the company that was picking it up. The meal ended up being about a uh, thousand euros a piece. Yeah. And I, when I got done with that meal, I walked over to a chicken shack and got, and a, got a chicken sandwich. sandwich. Yeah. And that's because that's you don't get enough. It depends. And you get, when you get these tasting menus, I like on a, on a white fancy spoon comes out uh, one cube of steak on like a potato foam. I think that's I'm going, like, what are we doing? I think it's evolved since then, man, because, you know, people. Well, this was 2014. Right. That's like four years ago. It's evolved since then. So that much enough for me. Look at how fat I got. Yeah, but <laughs> let's not pretend like you're not going over to the chicken place either. Afterwards. Not anymore. Not anymore. It would have oh, been really? a cheese When was steak. the last time you swung through a Wendy's? I couldn't. Honestly, I couldn't tell you. Oh, Popeye's. No, the only fast food I would do is in and out That true. Or unless you count like Cafe okay. Rio, which is the gringoist white food. Five ever. Guys, Chipotle. No. Capriati's. Yeah, but that's not really fast food, right? Because they're like actually making it. Loophole, you're right. So Capriati's is Five good. Five Guys, they're making it. 
Yeah, I'm not, I don't. I never like Five, five guys, guys guy. I like in and out. Get the fuck out of here. Five, you know, here's my problem with Five Guys. You can't have a problem. You can no, have a problem with one of them, but four of them are all right. Okay, well, the guy, the one of them who makes the buns. Is doing flimsy ass <laughs> the buns. One who makes the bun? They're, they they offer you like twenty different things that you can put inside the burger. Calvin, right? Yeah, Calvin guy, <laughs> one of the five guys, right? Like his buns are too flimsy. You got to get a sturdy no, bun for their all buns that. Perfect. No, absolutely. Well, we no. just agree to disagree. So, what's at Harvest that's so good? What do you get? So this is the deal, right? So, so I've never even heard of this place. This guy was he was a chef at the Bellagio, and usually, like you said. To get your name on a restaurant out here, you got to be a celebrity chef. They got to pay you a million of bucks to come in. Or win Hell's Kitchen. Sure. <laughs> but with him, he was so good for them. They were like, we're going to move you up, give you your own restaurant with your own name on it. He's the first. He's from Hawaii. He does like farm to table, locally sourced stuff, all those buzzwords. But he's the guy who's made it accessible for like people who just want to eat good food as opposed to the people who did it and would have like one potato with a piece of foam or whatever it is like that a piece of foam. so you're Can getting you a, a meal you get a meal bro i'll take you one time it's dope i mean i love that restaurant that's your, so on the strip that's your favorite what on are the your, strip top three favorite. on the strip uh let's see john george the steakhouse if you're going steak is amazing okay uh harvest i would say and third i like libertine uh libertine social sean mcclain is a really good where's show. that that's in Mandalay Bay. He's got uh, Sage and Aria. Uh, literally everything See, in Aria. I don't Aria. know any of these places. Aria is awesome. I've been There's to a few so of the good... good. St- what's the steakhouse in New York, New York? I don't know. There's a really good one in there that I that I had once and cut. But if, if anything uh, out of those fancy restaurants on the strip, I'll go to steakhouses. Well, then you should check out John George because that's, okay. like, that's baller right there. So. Off the strip. Off the strip, there's so many good restaurants. Uh, Raku, the Japanese restaurant, has kind of started like the off the strip food revolution, the modern one. I think that's great. Um, Never heard of any of these. It's so good, man. It's so good. Um, let's see. Uh, like even Applebee's. Applebee's, only if they're running the two for 20s. You got to you know? say it so, like that. Apple, yeah. Applebee's. You, you scored the winning goal tonight, honey. Yeah. Let's go get some. Oh, no. We're <laughs> hanging out in Minnesota at the Applebee's. Yeah. I, uh, I don't even know what state I'm from. I'm just from the mid of the northern Midwest. There's probably not somewhere. even Applebee's here, are there? There's an Applebee's is there? or two. Out I didn't here. even know. Yeah, there's definitely TGI Fridays, and uh, I feel like there aren't TGI Fridays here. There's yeah, a there's one. There's one on Sahara. I know there's I thought, a Friday. Oh, are they still open? Yeah, yeah, that's nice. But I never go to those places either. Like I'm trying to just cook at home. Yeah, me too. But well, I don't get fancy with it. So look, you're eating at such nice places. When you go home to eat, you're probably like, "Fuck this." I, I'll just have... Or are you like a chef at home? No. Now what happened is I got sick recently, which like it sounds minimal Lupus. compared to what you had. And to the AIDS and yeah, the so. cancer? But what it did what it did was uh, it... Uh, it sounds minimal <laughs> compared to what you had. Yeah, it's true. So I reset, it Diarrhea. reset the way I eat. Yeah. It was like five days. I lost 15 pounds in five days, which I needed to lose, but you know, like... Not yeah, like yeah, yeah. Thought it was food poisoning. Turned out to be more. I was like, all right, I got to chill out on what i'm doing so i'm eating much healthier which is nice so what are you eating what am i eating Give me a typical day when i on a see i, I do a no carb I've been, I've been tracking my food this week see i don't do any of that shit i'm not no. into calories in calories out i'm just trying to do no carbs see i think i like carbs i think you need i need carbs personally so so you have a pizza hat on and a pizza shirt yeah from two different pizza places what's pizza division this is Evil Pie downtown, which is cool, and this is a Joy Division. Like, which one's on. better, Good Pie or Evil Pie? Good Pie. But Vincent started at Evil Pie and moved over to Good Pie. Is What's my Joy Division? Joy Division, bro. Come on, man. One of the most seminal new wave bands of all time. Never heard of them. Love, love will tear us apart again. Then he hung himself. Never heard of them. It was like 23, Ian Curtis. David so. Carradine? No. Oh. He was 23, Ian Curtis. Okay, so like I'll have one big meal a day, and then I'll have like uh, Wednesday, I had a probiotic drink for breakfast. Those are great. I had a burnt ends burrito for lunch. Get your shit right. Get all your uh, <laughs> intestinal. Uh, yeah, fix what I, fix what was messed up. Right. That's how I got the tapeworm. A probiotic shake. I don't believe you. No, you have to order shit from the dark web, and then what you else do you do on the dark web? Eat it, mercenaries. Yeah. Drugs. You do these. Exactly. Uh, oh, yeah. <coughs> Not me, but I have a friend do it for me. 
Oh, you have I actually pay a child to sit and type the dark web addresses because I think there's some loophole. I feel where like I can't go to jail if I make a kid do it. That was like an episode of Mr. Robot. Was it? Well, they made him do all that stuff, but he wasn't a kid. Right. So then I had the bit. The, my big meal was the burn ends burrito at lunch. Then I had another probiotic drink. Then I had like a half portion of gnocchi and a watermelon feta salad for dinner. So Let me ask you this: uh, best barbecue in Vegas? Tough, right? It's tough. tough I to I think that Rick's Rolling Smoke is pretty fucking good when when it's good. I've I've been there and had it bad, um, but when it's good, I don't know if I've had better here. Go out to you got to go out to like. The country, I don't like have all to the do way anything. in North Vegas. John Mole's Meats, those are really good. John Mole's Meats. Yeah, John Mole. Just look up the name. It sounds John made up. It's not, but it does. <laughs> okay. Have you ever been to, uh, it's a sponsor of the show. It's the only sponsor we have, and I, I'd be remiss to men- mention it. Uh, Rick's Wings and Rings, you ever been to? I hate it so much. R- what? It's a piece of you shit. Can't, we I'm, gotta edit that out. I'm Whoa, I'm that's I'm bad. I'm we gotta. I'm, I don't know if we can fix this in I'm, post. I've never been there. I just said it. I just said it because. Oh my god, you, know, so. you gotta go. I'll take you to Harvest. Um, you take me to Rick's Wings and Rick's, Dings. No, well, it's Rick's Rings, Wings and Rings. All they have is chicken wings and, and onion, onion rings. rings. Yeah, I, I figured it's it great. out. Isn't it? Where is it? Um, uh, it's over on the. It's near Russell and Charleston. But uh, I just like to throw out street names. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll say that to locals and they'll go like, oh, okay. It's like those two streets don't go anywhere near no, each they, other. Yeah, they're, the, the, the streets you gave are actually parallel, parallel to one another. And other. way far apart. Yeah, they're yeah. on opposite sides yeah. of the city. But, you know, that's it's not a real place. But I, rings, wings, and I dicks. like <laughs> acting like it's a real place so that when people come to Vegas, they'll go like, oh, we got to try that place that Patrick always. Do you know what I did in college is I convinced my entire floor that I was living with that I had a younger brother named Yancey who was a genius and I've only met him three times in my life because my parents sent Yancey? him. Yancey? Yeah. Okay. It gets better because like it's such a ridiculous story but it's so full of details no one could call me on it. Uh, the, I've only met him three times in my life because my he's a genius so they sent him to genius school in Switzerland. You know? There's a genius school? Yeah. Well, according to my story, there is right, and okay. uh, I've only, uh, you know I've seen him like on two it's holidays. A loose detail. I saw him on two holidays in uh, grandmother's funeral, even though both my grandmothers were probably alive at the time. So, but and then but to sell the bit, what I would do is I would pick. Well, this is back when we had phones, like landline phones. I would pick up the phone. And I'd say, Yancey, you have to come home one of these days. Mom and dad miss you. And then I would just hang up the phone, and people would buy it because that's how good of an actor. Jesus I Christ. <laughs> We're going to get, I, I forgot about this, this project's been on hold, but we're going to get Rick's Wings and Rings shirts made mm. and sell those. We have the design already. It's a it's a rooster eating a uh, an onion ring That's and good. giving a thumbs up with the other feathered hand. I mentioned Gabe Nolasco earlier. He uh, had a chicken that he named Mr. Bakbagak. This is a true story. Bakbagak? Yeah, like that. Gotcha. And uh, he, you know... He's, Asian. Well, he was uh, he was Mexican, so he, you know, like, sure had a chicken because that's I don't know. Anyway, so um, and what he did, like an idiot, he fed the chicken chicken. He gave like chicken to the chicken the chicken to eat, and the chicken oh, that's got happened. the chicken got mad chicken disease. Like they get like no, yeah, and it went like crazy. That's and not had how seizure. it works. Is that it? is exactly how it works. How do you think all the cows got mad cow disease? By eating cow? Yeah, by eating beef. They fed them beef. They got mad cow that's disease. Not, but there's something else to it, bro. There's bacteria. Or, I'm telling you, we that's used how to it feed happened. our pigs pig all the time. And and what happened to those pigs? They got fat and were delicious when we ate them. Mm. Mm. Well, now I have mad. You're telling me like if I ripped my arm off, I don't know threw about it over human. a fire and just started rotisserie grilling my fingers. I think maybe if you ate human on a regular basis, maybe not once, but if you were like a cannibal, like like a few times a week, you might you might cannibal question. Uh, you chop my arm off. Or we get in a plane accident. One of us has to eat the other. Whoever wins the fight. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to eat my arm. You you chop it off. You roast it on a fire. You get it nice and toasty and, until it smells good. Mm-hmm. Which end are you eating from? Well, so first are you gonna of go, all... Are you going to go... El- like, if we cut off yeah. an el- elbow. Well, first of all, what I would do first... I mean, you know, just like if you you have a pig or anything else, you got to get rid of the hair, you know? I don't want to It'll burn off hair. immediately. Oh, we hope so. I'm, I'm going elbow, elbow. Well, we've all been eating like a chicken wing or like a piece of pork. And you get a little, and you get a little bit of the. But yeah. you let it go if the flavor's yeah. good. 
No, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat you from the elbow down to the like head. a turkey leg. Yeah, this is gonna be the base because if I you're have gonna your hand, hold I the wrist, you're gonna like hold the wrist, and I feel like the most meat's gonna be up here by your elbow anyway. Yeah. like this is this is gamey. You think like I mean you got yeah, fat but I bet you fingers, get, right? get into those <laughs> metatarsals. No, I bet like the finger meat is like the cheek. It's probably like the most succulent. I feel like it's the opposite. You have to cook it longer to get that like grizzly, like crunch, like a chicharrone or something okay. like that. This know? is the kind. So like you think like hand meat, you just throw in like a pot of greens and use it for seasoning. Um, like this would be yeah, like, that a might, hand. It might be a good stock. It's like a hawk. It's a yeah, yeah, like, yeah exactly. Get some like stock from yeah. It, so make like gravy. We're making this soup with your with your hand, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna drain it with like a strainer so your yeah. actual hand or maybe i just pick the hand up and get rid of it yeah so. or you feed that to the dog yeah well the tiny bones yeah because the dog likes chewing on the bones and everything like yeah that. no this all makes disgusting sense disgusting way to live i don't enjoy any of this i mean you asked a question i gave a I eat the fingers answer. first and i do a joke with it where i'd be like <laughs> like who I'd, would you do a joke to but i'd straight you, you know, just said it's me and you, you. Know the way that people said so, well you'd be you're not dead you're just missing an arm Oh, oh, it's like that. I thought one of us killed the other one and now has to no, eat it. Well, it'd be ridiculous to kill somebody if you just want food. I'm going to keep it? the rest of the meat alive. Oh, yeah, to get it into, like, perfect what, tender. What was the TV show where the guy said, like, he's come up with a way to harvest uh, six burgers? Oh, what, are you talking either, about multiplicity this, the or off, Michael no, Keaton? No, this is the, the Office or Arrested Development where he's like, we developed a, a horse. Oh, it's Dwight on the office. Yeah. Well, He's like, I developed a horse that you can harvest six burgers from a day while the horse is alive. I just so you're like literally eating it from the inside out. I just watched the first three seasons of Arrested Development. Again. Okay, they were good. Again? Yeah. Did you watch the new season five? That was the point. Is like I wanted to watch them all again from the beginning. So you haven't watched the new ones yet? No. Did you? Yeah, but season five ends fucking. Well, no, no spoilers. No, it's not a spoiler, but it ends like where you're like, there's oh the season's over. Well, maybe, but nothing really enough. happened, and nothing. There were only eight episodes, first of all, which seems short. Yeah, but that's okay the, because they're all so busy that that's probably all the time they could get. Them I know, but it just feels unresolved and unended. Well, that might be that, but no, because I think they split it into two. That I think. Am I wrong? Did they shoot sixteen and they're releasing eight now maybe. and eight next year? Yeah, is that what next year? Probably. This is worse than Lord of the uh, uh, Multiplicity with Michael. Thrones of the Games. M Michael Keaton, where he cloned three versions yeah, of Yeah, and himself. Andy McDowell. I'm familiar with the movie, okay? <laughs> Don't come in here with, like, you think I'm not going to get the reference. Grow up. Um, what, <laughs> what do you want to talk about? What's been going on with you? I, I've done so much shit that my brain is fried, and I have no no concept of I know, what uh, could be entertaining. Right. I have to carry the show. I, get I want it. you. To, well, I want you to... Bring your flavor into it. You know, why should I be that? When you watch The Tonight Show, it's not all about Carson. Well, he's not the anymore. host anymore. <laughs> no, when did he? <laughs> I hate to break the news to you. When did he you, buzz but... off? Um, it's... Well, this is a long story, everybody. I heard so. Carson had Bourdain on this week. Another callback. You're just, you're just working this Bourdain fit, angle. I'm going to fit four more Bourdain. Four Danes. Four Dane, Bourdain. Yep. Four more in. There you go. The thing is, you know, with uh, Bourdain is like uh, he had a wicked sense of humor, and all. Uh, if people were like, "Oh, How too do you soon." Know that? Well, I mean, don't you think by watching his show that I always thought that like that was part of the beauty of it was like the the comedy. I'm you. trying to give you a fucking Let me validation tell you a story here, you about dummy. meeting your heroes. I didn't meet my hero. What I'm saying is, all these people who are saying too soon. I feel like Bourdain would probably laugh at these jokes and everything. I feel like he'd kill himself again. <laughs> I. Can you do that? Don't meet your. The reason I asked, do you know if he's got Who's a good your sense hero? of humor? Did you meet one of your heroes and it was bad? Well, in a way, I'll tell you this. I used to run a podcast network in LA, and a friend of mine was having Tom Green on his show. Who works up here now? Um, yeah. And he was one of your heroes, Tom Green? I loved Tom Green. I loved his Canadian show. Yeah. I loved his MTV show. He then moved on and had like a different MTV show that was nightly. Yeah, he had like I a nightly that. talk show, and Ed McMahon was his fucking announcer. He got Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon from The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. To be his announcer. Right. Like, that's pretty baller. Sure. And it was like the best nightly cable 
show around. So I was a huge Tom Green fan. Um, I even stuck through him through Freddy Got Fingered. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Daddy, would you like some sausage? And the backwards man, the backwards man. All the stuff. Right. He came in to do that podcast with my buddy. It was the most dull, nothing. Like, because I had this thing, like, when he leaves, I'm going to ask. He had his publicist with him. And I was like, oh, I'm going to hit him up to do my podcast. My podcast was bigger. Yeah. And I was like, oh, do you want to come do my podcast? It's here, same place. Like, so he was a bad guest. When he, he was so bad that when he left, I didn't even think about asking him to come be on. You hear that, Tom Green? You're Patrick better Melton. than Tom Green is Big what I'm saying. You. Well, yeah. No, but it's, I just realized that it's a different skill. What about now? Because you both had the, the cancer and everything. You think maybe. It well, was. and we both fucked Drew Barrymore for a while. Don't think that's true. What are you talking about? You don't think he really did? Um, Whoa, look at that. That's a classic misdirect, everybody. I uh, I just feel like he should have been better. He, he ran a talk show. It's not even like it's a different skill. It should have been the same, but he was dull. He would ask questions, and then he would just be like, I don't know. Would you have been more disappointed if he was a good guest and turned out to be a huge asshole, or are you more disappointed that he just turned out to be a bad guest and is probably a nice guy? Um, okay, there's a few ways it could go, right? He could be great as a guest and great as a person. Great as a guest, horrible as a person. Horrible right. as a no, guest. No, but I asked a very specific question. I know. He's not great saying, and great. On the grid, on that grid, Yeah, I think the worst would be... Yeah, because when he's when he's not good on the show and a dick, that's kind of like who gives a fuck. Well, yeah, but that's not part of the question. Great You're, on the show and a dick. He's either great on the show and a dick, or he's horrible the show and a great person. What's worse for you, as someone as a Tom Green fan? Um, worse would be bad on the show hmm. and not a dick. My brother, he, we grew up in New Jersey. We're huge New York Giants fans. My brother's a sports producer. He met Bill Parcells, and like he's and my brother, we're not like autograph hounds, but he's like, "Hey, I gotta ask you, man. You know, I grew up watching you. Can I get a picture?" And he's like, "All right, make it fast, right?" Parcells like was an asshole, and he's like, "Man, I'm so glad he was an asshole because if he was nice, like, what's the point? This is Bill Parcells. He was right. Like, you know, what at I mean? the end of the day, I think it's more disappointing if he's not good on the show and nice because I want him good on the show. You're Tom Green. I like you. You're funny to me. Be funny. Yeah. Be Tom Green." Yeah. The minute you're not, and, and how you treat me personally, well, you can just be an asshole, but I want you to be Tom Green and be funny. I interviewed uh, Tracy Morgan for a magazine not too long ago, right? Yeah. And he totally got aggressive with me. And uh, He's crazy, though. Yeah, and it was a lot of stuff like, and I would ask him, like, really, I thought, well thought out questions, like, hey. But th there's no right. well thought out answer from so, Tracy Morgan. So I'd ask me, like, hey, man, you had a lot of, like, really memorable characters on Saturday Night Live. Now with these new Brian Fellow. Right, exactly. Astronaut Jones. Now with these new platforms, Netflix, Hulu, you know, whatever. Amazon. Astronaut Jones. You don't remember that? He was like that astronaut, like, rocket. I'm taking a rocket. No, I remember Star Jones. No. It, I'm Star uh, Jones, and I'm yes. a lawyer. That was always good, too. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. No, Astronaut Jones, <laughs> okay. would, he would go to, like, a uh, planet and, like, He'd find like a hot space alien like Britney Spears, right? And she'd, I'm gonna fuck that alien. It pretty much would be like, you know, she'd be like, you know, I'm so glad you're here, astronaut Jones. We need, you know, this and that to survive. And she'd give a long rant, and he'd be like, let me. He and then he would just have like one line, and then it'd be like, it'd be like, uh, bend over and let me see that ass, right? Which but he couldn't do today. This is you know? I, so I've worked with him a few times, and that was my one thing that drove me nuts. Like, there's not a real person there. He's well, He's maybe nuts. that is, but. So let me let me just finish this thing because you're talking about meeting people yeah. that you admire, right? So I'm interviewing him and I ask him that question, like, are we going to see these characters in other formats? Do you think or other forms? And he he got super aggressive. He's like, "Why I got to do that for you? I got so much more to give. You selfish. You want me to go back and do something I did? You selfish, right?" And I was just like. Bro, I'm from North Jersey. You could get a, as aggressive with me as you want. This is just like walking down the street where I grew up, man. You know. Yeah, I don't understand uh, it. He and he always, mm -hmm. 
even if he's had something serious to say, he would button it with something vaguely sexual. Yeah. Like, he'd always be like, I need to get to the airport, fit and fold my penis up in a taco. <laughs> he goes, like, what, what? I go, my question was this, and it was a compliment to him, but he didn't let me finish. It was like, uh, the question was, you're doing this new show, The Last OG, and Tiffany Haddish is on the show. She's having, like, kind of her it girl moment right, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had an it moment, right? And, like, have kind of dealt with, like, all the momentum and, like, you know, you're successful. Was it when that Walmart truck hit you? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like, how? Is that your do you have moment? A, I go, ah, bored aim. What advice would you give her? He goes, and he he's just, like, jumps in. He's like, no, nah, this ain't the Tiffany Haddish show. This the last OG with Cedric the Entertainer, Tracy Morgan, and Tiffany Haddish. This is not the Tiffany Haddish show. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's. That wasn't really what I asked you, but all right, you know. I now, know. did was your follow up question? How's it feel to play Liz Lemon? <laughs> right, exactly. It's literally, like, like someone else coming in and taking over your show. What you think is your show? Right, right. Uh, that was a fun. thirty rock reference. Yeah, I got it. Put shout out to Bourdain. Multiplicity. Have we done an hour? At least. Oh, we just hit an hour. Go ahead. Um, Let's do a little more. Do, yeah. What else do you want to talk about? I don't know. Do you want to read this? No. I had this email, which has kind of depressed me. Well, oh, wow. That sounds like a great thing. Let's read it then. Um, and it's on the paper where you crumpled up your gum? This gets even better. It's, yeah, it is my gum paper. Uh, yeah, well, I don't want to read it. We'll save it. It's, de- it's too depressing. It's a very depressing odd letter. Okay. Do you believe in ghosts? I don't don't believe in ghosts, but I don't know if I believe in ghosts. Like ghosts in the sense of like when they do like the the shows where they like go into the house and they're like, I feel an energy here. Is there a presence? Did something happen in this room? Do you think that's real? I don't I don't know. I just think there are too many. Like I listen to a podcast called Spooked. Have you ever heard that? Where they get rid of the blacks in the neighborhood. <laughs> it's all about supernatural. Uh, what if that's what issues. it was? <laughs> They would have a huge audience today. Spooked. Don't you think that would oh have a huge... God, your yeah. version of it would have a huge audience Or right that's now. just Trump's podcast. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. just like, that's just Sarah Huckabee Sanders' daily I'm press conference. getting so. nervous there in the country, <laughs> folks. I'm getting spooked. <laughs> there you go. Um, anyway, it's all about like people who have dealt with like <laughs> supernatural circumstances. And I just wonder like if all these people have dealt with something and they're so specific, like, you know, what... Do you not believe in coincidence? I believe in coincidence. Now, don't get me wrong. So I've had a few things in my life where it's like, that's pretty fucking crazy. But it's like, I don't know. Sometimes don't things just fall into place and they're coincidence? Sure. And it's just the way it is? Yes. The answer is yes. So I think what our brains like to do is weave a story to make sense of things we don't understand. It's the same reason... People made up gods to believe in for thunder and lightning and shootings. <laughs> like, uh, is there a god of shooting? Well, the, the thoughts and prayers after every oh, shooting. Oh, right, right. Like, gotcha. We like to think that there's someone up there pulling the strings for all this stuff, and that's why. Because we, but it, we could just be hurling on a fucking rock, and sometimes you hear a noise. Sure. I agree. <laughs> What this didn't really go anywhere, but all right. No, but I'm just trying to gauge like where people at, where people are at with like the belief in what, uh, spirits and geists and ghouls and ghosts and and their intentions. Are they here to hurt us? Do you are they malicious? Maybe there's some of each. Yeah, why would it be? Maybe <laughs> it's a spectrum. It doesn't have to be black or white, right. Patrick. Like autism. They're just coming to grab some pussies. There's a spectrum. So. Yes, um, and I'm on it. What? When you normally have comedians on this show, what do you know, do you talk about comedy or some are heavy? I've done so you know, well, I'll tell you how the sausage is made. We've done some shows today. So I'm kind of burnt out on podcasts, but I also enjoy serious conversations. Like they don't all have to be this doesn't have to be ha ha 
You know, we're doing, where did we fall? We're doing the board of Bourdain callbacks. I think we're right. hitting them with some pretty we good. We got some guy because I think we're talking about like comedy, like interesting topics, not necessarily isn't comedy, but better, we're maybe being humorous. About isn't it, it better? Yeah, isn't it better to just talk about things and then be funny about the things? That's when, what you when said. It, this isn't Byron Allen's comic on Leash. Comics yeah, on Leash. You know? No, you went to an airport uh, recently <laughs> yeah. and had a weird situation hey. with a neck pillow. What was that about? <laughs> I heard you like, uh, like coffee. That's you ever weird. have a weird situation in a coffee shop? Up, coming I, up. It's the same as Bob and Tom. Like, if you ever go to Bob and Tom, like, they, they want a list of, like, seven bits before you go on. And they'll stop out, like, so you had an interaction with a midget recently. What, what was that? <laughs> yeah, Tell us what happened good. there. And it's like, ugh. Right. I don't, I don't want do you that. to jump to a hoop. I don't want to do that, man. No, but do do the bit about the Which one? Santa Claus. I'm ready for it. I'm always ready to perform. Do the Santa Claus. Bit. <laughs> Just I need you to validate me, everybody. No. Yeah. So I lo- it is my test for like new comics. I'll go like, tell me one of your bits. And if they immediately like rush into doing it, I go you like just walk you're, away. Not, you're yeah. not a real comic yet. Yeah, I don't. Because any real comic will go like, fuck you. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. Or or the or the opposite of uh when you tell someone you're a comic, like Oh, I think I'm. I think I should do stand up comedy. My friends all say I'm the funniest one in the group, you know. And it's like, yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. the same no, exact people thing. People at the office right. tell me I'm. Yeah. Uh, Literally, there's no skill to what we do, no craft. It's just if you, you know, like if you're the funniest one in your group, that's all. Every day at lunch, people say I'm Bourdain like. This is that's three. That's I know, three. but what I got was, one more. I I'm promised trying to four. Like figure what that one was. You said he was very funny. I, I think he humor. is funny. Yeah. So I was. That was, was a callback funny. to that. That one was uh, like it was it was a not as strong oh, as come on! Comeback, so you know just wanted to scream it wasn't um, as Rick's dings and things Rick's wings and rings uh, I do have to mention them our sponsor Rick's wings and rings please stop by on Tuesday nights remember Tuesday nights bring your own ranch night if you bring your own ranch you have your own ranch they give you <laughs> they give you um, a packet of ranch. If you bring your own right. ranch. Sundays are monster <laughs> truck. Sundays come in a monster truck, get one free wing. So look for that. That's um, good. And any topping you want on that wing. They also, don't forget it is summer and they're the home of the biggest barbecue sauce water slide this side of the Mississippi. There's not many of them. It's a, it's a low bar to clear, right, but right. they've done it. <laughs> yeah. So. It's actually very small, <laughs> uh, but it is the biggest one. <laughs> what, 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 I want someone with a monster truck to be like, you mean I can't get teriyaki or lemon <laughs> yeah. pepper? Sorry, basic, just fried, <laughs> no sauced wings. Sauce is 30 cents extra. Yeah, as it should be. It takes a lot of work to create these sauces. I want to do a sauce. I want to have a wing sauce that's just ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> like they're just salt and pepper wings tossed in ketchup. <laughs> you have to give it a name, like you know, like um, like uh, what would it be? Like tangy red or something. Paprika like that. punch out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like call it something mm-hmm. that it doesn't even taste. Blistered like. tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Blistered <laughs> tomato. <laughs> yeah. That'd be uh, fun. Yeah, blanched red sauce. We blanch it. <laughs> That's right. Upside uh, down, bottle turn sauce. Um, uh, What else did I want? Oh, you wear your T-shirt and your kids get free daycare while you do the hot wing challenge. Yeah. If you wear a Rick's Wings and Rings shirt. We have a lot of weird specials. Oh, are you are you part of it? Now? I'm an investor. And, okay, and I, I say we because like they sponsor the show. Right. Before big, it was like they were a sponsor, but now you're actually in right. the infrastructure of... Rick's stings and things. And there is a Vidalia (laughs) shortage, so Rick's wants to make very clear that for the next three weeks, all their onion rings will not have onion in them. Oh, really? There's no other types of onions? It's just the batter. It's so strange. It's just the batter. First of all, that Rick's wings and rings was using Vidalia, which is expensive and trendy Yeah, but it is the best kind for an onion ring. Sure. You get the big, big, sweet. What I find odd is that he didn't decide to replace it with another type of onion. Well, they are under an onion vendor contract that they can't get out of, and they're not allowed to source them from other places, even when they're Why out. did I tell you earlier? Read your contracts, folks. Am I right, Bourdain? So, there you go. That was the last one? That didn't even make sense, no, but I there's sand- nothing. I shoehorned the fuck out of it to get it in there. Uh, do you want to plug some stuff? What do you got? Sure, I'll on? plug a few things. Uh, I would I would say uh, watch The Defeated. I really like that web your series. Your web series, yeah. yeah. Um, it's about... 
what it was supposed to be about was two guys who wanted to be in entertainment and life keeps defeating them, but it turned out to just be two guys who are depressed and verbally beat the shit out right. of each other. Every so it's just through. webcam footage from your house. <laughs> it's, it's as close to real with my relationships with my friends as possible, yeah. Uh, that's on Facebook, uh, www, blah, 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 blah. Facebook.com backslash The Defeated Show. I'm on Facebook at uh, J. Harris Comedy and Twitter, J. Harris Comedy, and on Instagram at Jason Harris Comedy. Do you go by J? No, but there's too many letters to put in those. Yeah, other I got ones, you. You, know? you got your fingers in a lot of poi. I have to, man. I'm, we're shooting another web series next month. I'm excited for that. Do you need so. a fat cadaver? I just want to be a fat cadaver. I don't something. have. I, I'll, nah, I'll remember keep your that. eyes open. Hey, you know, I got a story in a graphic novel that just got published. That's what pretty that? exciting. And uh, so it was called. It's Is it where, about Bourdain. Yeah, it's not about, interesting. Okay. Uh, it's called Where We Live. It was a benefit for uh, it's a benefit for the Route 91 survivors. So go, another tragedy. Go ahead. That was gunshots from the top of the yeah. Middle Bay. No, I wish those people the best. Godspeed. So you're with Bourdain now. So anyway, yeah. See, that was a better callback than what your last. Yeah, one. I wish I would have saved it. Yeah, we'll edit it. We'll get it all right. Don't edit it. In let post. it. Just let it go. Do you think I edit anything? No. Right. Where we live, it's through Image Comics. Uh, J. H. Williams and Wendy Williams curated it. So um, when after the Wendy Williams, not not Wendy Williams, like the okay, because I was about. like, what? But anyway, after ten one, um, because I'm a food writer, I was able to use resources. We fed a lot of people. We're in calling those two it ten one now. Sure. Um, and soon there's going to be so many tragedies on different days right. that we're not even going to keep them gonna be straight. Like, oh, like, it's three six. Yeah, again. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> ah, it's three <laughs> six again already. Yeah. I never have time to go cake shopping. Yeah, right. So we fed a lot of people. I wrote a story about it. It's in the mag. It was got it turned into a magazine article. They hit us up to do it in Image Comics. It's turned right. into a graphic novel. Me and Ali Masters, who wrote. The Kitchen, which is starring Tiffany Haddish, coming out soon. And, it's starring Tracy um, Morgan. Tiffany Haddish is also in it. Cena Grace. <laughs> Get Cena it right. Cena Grace drew it. So I'm just going to keep talking. And uh, yeah, so all that stuff. And uh, what else? I don't know. I'm doing comedy. Find me on social Twitter, media. any of that stuff? Yeah, I mentioned all that. Instagram. And my website's goforjason.com and soon to be French Riviera Yacht Club. Go for Jason. Go for Jason.com. That's how you're going to answer the phone now? That, that I just didn't want, like, you know, I used to have Jason Harris comedy.com and like, yeah, yeah. but I'm moving it from go for Jason.com to French Riviera yacht club.com. So, what <laughs> first of all, that's great. What is uh, at Jason Harris.com? No, I, I don't know. I think it's a, I remember, I don't know. We have to look it up. I, I think it's probably just a park site that some asshole won't sell me. Did you whatever. try to get it? Yeah, I've tried to get every site. And he's just mm -hmm. like, no. Let's go. Jason Harris. Maybe our listeners can harass them until they give it to you. They're really good at that. Yeah. Help me out. I'll take JasonHarris.com, but I won't shut down French Riviera Yacht Club dot com for it. It'll be oh, it's it. just empty. Nothing that's what there. I said. Someone's brand, like just stole what a piece of shit. Yeah, that's how they do it, man. That's how um, they get you, bro. Yeah, that's that's a load down and dirty. Yeah. Um, join the overdose. I'll plug our stuff. Nobody likes onions.com slash overdose. Ten dollars a month. That's how the show survives. We couldn't do it without you. Get access to our back catalog, bonus content, and all the other stuff. Uh, Oktoberfest, uh, Munich, Germany. Come drink with us and hang out. Uh, uh, September twenty first through twenty eighth is the week we're going to be there. Come on out to that. It's not even you're... October. Well, Oktoberfest starts in September. A very uh, common. Are you doing comedy out there? Or are you doing podcasts? Oktoberfest, no, it's just uh, party and drinking. Okay. Uh, I will be doing comedy though in Little Rock, Oklahoma City, and uh, New York City before heading off to do comedy in England, Scotland, all August for the Edinburgh Fringe Festivals. Two or three shows a day there for the entire month. One's enough. Come see uh, me do that and be tired as fuck and sick by the end of it. Then Barcelona, Spain, then Germany. Then God back here in October for ten one. Wouldn't want to miss it. Um, <laughs> I got to be back for ten one. The I know. anniversary of the big. No, I got the joke. No, but I'm doing a reenactment. As I what? Don't ever do re mm -hmm. Would it be insensitive to do a shoot a mass shooting reenactment? You would think so, but really, isn't a civil it's war the reenactment same, right? Yeah, like, it's just as know, offensive. It's pretty offensive. So. You're retelling history. You could argue that, like, well, it's so we don't forget. There is actually a town in um, 
in Georgia. I read about it, and they do. No, there's not. No, there is a town in Georgia, and uh, they do reenactments of um, like a white mob lynching four black people. That actually happened because they want people no. to look. Yeah, and it makes it's and they do it every year, and it's like. Do they get black people to like play the? Black yeah, people? it's no, dude. It I don't would, know what's more offensive to have black people no, play it or to have white, white people do it in def- black things. Definitely the latter. But you're, <laughs> but you're misreading it because you're thinking the white people organized this. This was organized by black people to to make sure that never people, forget. Right, exactly. Remember, white people fucking suck a lot of the time. Yeah. Everyone sucks Everyone, a lot of the yeah, time. Yeah, all lives matter. Can we? <laughs> no, that's fucking right. crazy. Also, yeah. why is it the South that loves these reenactments more than the North when they lost? We got other things to do. But mm. is, does the South think it's gonna like maybe this year? Like, are they are they really like fingers crossed? Like it's Ole Miss? It's are all, they just like, yeah. well, look, I know you beat us for ra- right, it's right like, around a hundred and forty years, but I believe right. this unless year. Draymond gets suspended, you know, right, you're not going to win the, the finals. First of all, I don't know about all these slaves taking knees. <laughs> that's a, that's a pretty good joke. That's a good joke. Bourdain wrote it. Guys, we're gonna get yeah. out of here. Uh, uh, anything else you want to say? Thanks for coming. I know you're in a, on a tight schedule too, and you got to get out of here. I stayed late, but I appreciate you. I know, your... but I appreciate you. Well, no, I didn't do it I'm for telling. you. I did it for the all those people who are contributing to this. Cushy I don't lifestyle even have a podcast. Out. This is not even recorded. I you've, just need friends to come hang out you've, with. You've done a really elaborate job of of like making this scheme work. Bourdain set it up. I want to go ride a bicycle into a pool. Uh, Thank you for listening, everybody. We're going to go ride bikes into a pool. Come join us next time you're in Vegas. We'll get Jason back on when I'm back uh, in October. Let's do it. Come on and do a show. Um, Bye, everybody. We'll talk soon. Don't kill your parents. It's not nice to do. I don't know why I said that. Unless your parents try to kill you. That's true. Then you can Bourdain them. That doesn't even work either. It's not good. You're just... How can I use it as a verb? Like, you've been Bourdain. Well, I mean, I guess if you saw you someone... use it like ordained. Who, no, if someone like... If you walked in on someone who hanged the, him or herself, you could be like, oh, he Bourdained himself. What if you're like, I'm a Bourdained minister? Then you would be a minister it's who hung, hanged himself? I don't think it's... I don't think it's wordplay. It's just a rhyme. Hanged. Yeah, it is hanged. hanged. Yeah. yeah. That's a tricky one. Bye, everybody. Don't commit your... Yeah, we should have closed three so, minutes ago. Suicide. Pa- Patrick's running the light on his own podcast. I smoked weed before so. this. I don't need any mm-hmm. of you. Bye.